Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I know what you're thinking, I've had a haircut. I have. Uh, and I've also got this stuck around my face. Now, uh, recently my sister started a channel. If you or anyone you know is into uh, making outfits, you know, customising outfits, turning things into different things, then please check her out. I've left a link to her channel down in the description. The reason I'm wearing this is because I said if she got a thousand views on her first video, which she did, I would wear the things that she makes. This is supposed to be a lovely top. And as you can see, it, uh, well, it's not quite my size. Anyway, let's, let's move on to today's video. I can't get it up. So in today's one, we're going to be taking a look back at the R9 290, an old school, power hungry, very hot graphics card from AMD. Now I love these reference style cards, but as I say, one thing that's problematic about them is that they do run at rather high temperatures. Now I used this in an i7 build not long ago, and in that video, I said that I wanted to look at this card when paired with a more powerful processor just to see what it could really do in 2020. I quickly discovered that whilst it was still capable in some titles, it was, of course, exhibiting some heat issues. In fact, I have a few results here. Now, these results aren't representative of what this card can really do because it was throttling. The GPU was reaching its maximum temperatures, and when it did, we saw the core clock drop significantly, and therefore, we were incurring plenty of frame rate drops and stutters and many many lag spikes this of course isn't ideal so i wanted to mess around with this card a little bit not only see if we could cool it down a little bit but also whether or not we could actually overclock it now what you can do immediately is simply whack the fan speed up but of course that does come with a small consequence and that is as follows Now this actually kept the GPU a little bit cooler, but I decided it was then time to give this card a bit of a clean up and see what sort of numbers we could expect after doing so. Now this is as simple as undoing about eight screws and once we had lifted the cooler off of the PCB, I noticed that the thermal paste had pretty much dried up. Of course, this is going to directly impact our temperatures and therefore performance. I then decided to replace the thermal paste, remove some of this excess dust and fire the card up again to see whether or not the temperatures were improved and if so, would our frame rates remain more stable? Let me just throw some more results up on screen here just to compare it to the original results when the card was in its dirty and very dusty state. You can see that the average and 1% and 0.1% low figures are much improved in the two tested examples, Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5. Never underestimate the power of cleaning a second-hand graphics card. Some fresh thermal paste and a bit of dust removal can sometimes work wonders. Now when it came to an overclock, I set the clock speed to 1075 megahertz up from 947 and the memory clock to 1400 megahertz up from 1250. It turns out that we would have to drop these a little bit later on due to stability problems and I also had to set the fan speed to 55% here which was a little audible to say the least, but let's talk about the differences I saw in terms of performance with this overclock and discuss the temperatures of the card when overclocked as well. So with a Red Dead Redemption 2, we were at 76 degrees maximum with the R9 290 and our results were fairly good, 45 FPS on average with 1% and 0.1% lows of 34 and 20. Now in GTA 5, our overclocked GPU remained a little bit cooler than it did in Red Dead Redemption, and we saw about seven frames, sorry, six frames more on average than we did with the GPU at stock speeds. In fact, the 1% low was also slightly improved, though the 0.1% low didn't really change. The average FPS increase is nice though. Again, just like in Red Dead Redemption 2, a nice extra couple of frames here and there won't go amiss in busier areas. Now before we could test Warzone properly, I had to drop the overclock speeds to 1045 megahertz on the clock and 
1350 megahertz on the memory simply because the system crashed if I tried to jump into any game with COD Warzone, unfortunately. However, we did still see a nice improvement because in Warzone with 1080p and a mix of normal and high settings, we saw an average of 79 frames per second up from 71, a 1% low increase from 53 to 59, and the 0.1% low was also improved from 49 to 55. Not bad. The temperature of the card when overclocked in Warzone got to 80, so again, it's nowhere near the original temperature of 95. Now, I didn't expect Overwatch to be the game where the graphics card got the hottest, but it hit 81 degrees here. Again, this was with 55% fan speed. The average frame rate came back as 158, with 1% 1 lows of 115 and a 0.1% low of 71. Compared to the stock GPU, which saw 141 FPS on average with 1% 1 and 0.1% lows of 94 and 65, well, it was, again, a pretty welcome improvement. The more frames you can get on an online competitive FPS title like this one, the better. There we have it then. This has been Jet Engine Simulator 2020. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.